session one of angels. We didn't finish it last week. And uh, the reason I'm, I'm talking about this is just to help you understand that in your journey of life, as you serve the Lord, as you go along, all the moms doing all your chores and doing various things, that you are not alone. That there's a supernatural life, there's a supernatural existence, and there are things going on in a world that you don't see with your natural eyes. It's called the spiritual realm. And in this realm is where a lot of angels are active, a lot of angels are doing various things. And uh, last week we started to take a look at the fact that um, God has given us angels to protect us, to help guide us, etc. And that right throughout the Bible, from the book of Genesis to Revelation, we find this reality of supernatural beings that sometimes becomes visible in our world. And sometimes some people see them, sometimes others cannot see them. An angel might appear here, and if they only want certain people to see them, they can appear only to those people. And we find many examples of that in the Bible. And uh, throughout the generation, if, or generations, if you study church history and you read the testimonies of Christian believers right throughout the centuries, from the first century for the last 2,000 years, you'll find that it is filled with testimonies and stories of supernatural encounters where angels ministered to people, they assisted people, and uh, in many cases, even led people to the Lord. There are at this very moment amazing, amazing testimonies coming forth, especially from the Muslim world, North Africa and the Middle East, where angels are appearing to people, and people, Muslims, are getting saved. They turn to Christ because an angel has appeared to them and uh, shared with them the truth. It's amazing what God can do. And uh, so I want us to really understand that angels is part of our walk as a Christian. Okay, God created them for specific purposes. And last week, uh, we started to look at some of the purposes. I'll just recap very quickly. We said that um, angels provide personal guidance to some people. We saw examples in scriptures that they can reveal the truth to us. We saw that angels can protect us from harm. I shared last week on uh, when we as a family went through the Second Lebanon War in Israel, how there was such a strong presence of angels with us, and that the Lord showed me angels that's protecting us, and no harm came to us as a family. And uh, today I want us to continue, and uh, there's ten points that I want to share. Last week we looked at three. So point number four this week is, what do angels do? And angels deliver people from their enemies. It's very interesting. When the apostles were arrested and placed in jail, you see that angels literally let them out of prison. Let's look at this scripture in Acts chapter 5 in the New Testament. It says, And rising up, the high priest and all those who were with him were filled with anger and laid their hands on the apostles. In other words, they captured them. All right? They arrested them and put them in public custody. But... The angel of the Lord opened the prison doors by night and brought them out and said, Go, stand and speak all the words of this life to the people in the temple. Can you imagine this? That they are proclaiming Jesus Christ. The religious leaders who don't want them to proclaim comes and they say, Listen, you have to stop doing this. And they actually arrest them. And put them in captivity. And what happens? By night, an angel comes, opens the doors. That shows you that a locked door is not a problem for an angel. Okay? We know in Scripture they can move freely in and out of places. You cannot lock them out of something. Okay? And this is amazing if we see here in the New Testament that when Christians were arrested, God just opened the prison doors by using an angel. Can you imagine the next day, they know they're in captivity, the religious leaders. The next day they come to the temple, and here they are again preaching in the name of Jesus. It's like, how did you get out of jail? You're not going to believe this. But the angel of the Lord led us out. So we can clearly see that there are a number of examples like this in Scripture. I'm just mentioning uh, one or two of them. 
Uh, look at this one in Acts chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. It says, And when Herod, that's Roman, Herod, was about to take him out, the same night Peter was sleeping in chains between two armed men. Here we see the apostle Peter being in jail. And look at this. He's not only in jail, he is chained to two guards. And the watchmen were keeping watch before the door of the prison. So look at this. They knew what happened the previous time. The angel came and he led the apostles out. So now they know, listen, they put Peter in jail. We have to make double sure this guy doesn't get out. So what did they do? They chain him to two guards that sleeps next to him. He can't move. Plus they put guards at the gate to stop it. So it's like now it's a bulletproof plan. Not again will an angel open the door. Now let's read what happened. And a great light was seen shining in the room, and an angel of the Lord came to Peter, touching him on his side, so that he came out of the sleep and said, Get up quickly. Look at this. And his chains came off his hands. Then the angel said, Put on your shoes and get ready to go. And he did so, and he said, Put on your coat round and come with me. And the door opened. None of the guards knew what was going on. They were all like in this gaze, in this... And Peter goes and he knocks on the door, if we continue to read the story, of uh, where the disciples was busy praying for his release. And in fact, one lady opened the door because he was like, you know, and they said, go and see who's at the door. We're praying for Peter. You know, he's in jail. And she opens the door and here's Peter standing. And she's like, closed the door, went upstairs, and it's like, who is there? And they said, no, no, it's probably Peter's angel. Which shows you that in the New Testament church, they believed, and in Hebrew thinking, that's also, that each person has got an angel protecting him that looks just like him. And here we see that Peter was released. So even if they chain you, and they cuff you to, prison, to guards, and they lock the doors, and they put guards in front, angels have got a way to override all of that. If God wants you free, you will be free. Okay? Very interesting thing. So angels can free people from their enemies. Let's look at number five. Angels can take care of people, including feeding people. We find in Scripture that people were tired, that they were weary, and angels came and attended to them, strengthened them. Look at 1 Kings chapter 19. It says, and as he lay and slept under a broom tree, behold, an angel touched him and said to him, this is Elijah, by the way. It's the prophet Elijah. And so he's busy sleeping, and the angel touched him and says to him, Arise, eat. And he looked, and behold, a cake was baked on the coals and a jug of water at his head. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came to him a second time and touched him and said, Arise, eat, because the journey is too great for you. And Elijah arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. Now, just think about this for a moment. Elijah is busy sleeping under a tree. Someone wakes him up. It's an angel. He says, listen, Elijah, you have to eat. So he wakes up and there's a cake. That's baked with water. Imagine that. Free food. Who baked the cake? So he eats. He falls asleep again. And a second time the angel wakes him up and says, Listen, you've got a very long journey. You have to eat. And he eats again. And that food, the energy that he gets from that food, lasts him for 40 days. Have you ever ate a meal that lasted you for 40 days? Think about that. Not the best energy drink or bar in the world will give you that. You know, they say this gives you energy and it lasts you maybe like an hour. 40 days, the food sustained him. And look at that. Who, who cooked it? Who made it? An angel of the Lord. Isn't that interesting? Look at the next scripture. In Matthew chapter 4, we know that Jesus was tempted in the desert. He went into the desert for 40 days days being tempted by the devil and it says and jesus said to him 
Go, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and you shall serve him only. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. So here we can see that at the end of the 40 days, when Jesus was tired, he fasted and prayed and was tempted, was confronted with the devil for 40 days in the desert. When he was finished, angels came and attended to Jesus. They strengthened him. Isn't that amazing? Now, it's very interesting. If you go and you read Matthew chapter 4, and you read this whole story of um, the angel or, or, or Satan that actually says to him, listen, let me get it here. Genesis 32. Where are we now? Matthew 4. Let me just double check something. I don't want to skip something. Matthew 4, Matthew 4, Matthew 4. That's it. No, I'll tell that later. It's, it'll come to us a little bit later. Okay, let's look at the next one. Angels encourages people. Angels can encourage you. Point number six. Okay, there's the scriptures. Look at Genesis chapter 32. And Jacob went on his way, and the angel of God met him. Now, the context is here. Jacob is about to meet his brother Esau. And there's a very bad relationship between Jacob and Esau. Why? Because Jacob took off with Esau's birthright. All right? You know that story? When he said, listen, give me your birthright and I'll give you some soup, lentil soup. You know that whole story. And then later when Jacob pretended to be Esau, when Isaac gave the blessing and he, he, he wrapped the skin of an animal around him because Esau was a very hairy man. And so when Isaac gave the blessing, he felt the arm, but it was actually Jacob pretending to be Esau, covering his arm with a animal skin. And uh, so he got the blessing. And when Esau came and he said, Father, bless me and give me my first right blessing that the father normally gives to the son. He said, what do you mean? I've already given it. Because his father couldn't see well. He was turning blind. And then they realized, oh, Jacob came, pretended to be Esau. Now, there was a, a, a big um, hostility between them because of that. And Esau wanted to kill Jacob. So Jacob is going to meet his brother and uh, he's very despondent because of that. And it's a very difficult situation. He doesn't know how Esau is going to react, etc. And so Jacob went on his way and the angel of God met him. And when Jacob saw the angel, he said, this is God's camp. And he called the name of that place two camps. We see there that the angel encouraged him, if you read the story, in the whole process of meeting his brother. Look at this in Acts chapter 27. We read this, for this night there came to me, um, to my side, an angel of God who is my master and whose servant I am saying, have no fear, Paul. Look at this. For you will come before Caesar and God has given you all those who are sailing with you. Now, the story here is there's this massive storm that's on the water and um, they were about to die. And God says to Paul, don't worry. Through an angel, he said, don't worry, none of you, you will die, you will live, because I want you to go to Rome, and you will appear before Caesar. You will come before the emperor, and testify about me, who I am, and what I am, and the fact that Jesus is the Messiah. And here we can see, it's a very difficult situation. Imagine being on a boat, the waves are enormous, they began to throw their cargo overboard in order not to sink. And you think you're going to die. It's literally, this boat is beginning to, and the woods are beginning to become disconnected. And you think you're going to die and drown. And the sharks are going to eat you. And an angel comes and he says to you, listen, don't worry. Everything will be okay. Okay? It's going to be all right. So here we can see that, Angels can encourage people. The angel encouraged Paul and says, don't worry. I know you're in difficult circumstances, but God's got a purpose and a plan for your life. All right. And that's very often, like I said last week, very often, most of the times in the Bible, when we find angels appearing to people, they appear in human form. All right. And very often we mistake angels for people. We think, oh, it's just a person. And it's not just a person appearing to you. It might be an angel. How many of you were in the service last week when uh, um, uh, hmm? 
Mike. When Mike shared his testimony where he was driving with his car and he was stopping at an intersection and all of a sudden there's a man next to his window and he said to him, go and change your tire. And uh, Mike thought, yeah, I'll do that. And, And the man said to him, no, 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 drive to the next station and change it now. And he decided to do that, and he went, and when they took off the tire, they found that this tire would have probably bursted. It it wouldn't have lasted. And Mike said he knew then that if he had continued to drive with that tire, him and his family would probably have been killed. So what's the chance that you're driving somewhere, you're stopping, and a man comes next to your your window, and he says, go and change your tire now. Now, many of you might have had experiences like that. On last Thursday evening at um, our Afrikaans life group, one of the, our members in our life group shared a testimony and a story um, of an angel protecting him in very difficult circumstances. And he told the story where one night he arrived home, his family was at home, and it was, uh, he was with his brother and the wives and children, they were in the, in the house. And uh, as, he came, as they drove into Uh, their property, um, all of a sudden there were armed robbers with them in the property. And when they got out of the car, here are these men, and uh, he realized that there's big problems now, big problems. He said it's pitch dark, and uh, the families are in the house. And he says everyone is shouting, shouting, and he says says to them, especially to, I think it was his brother, it was his brother was with him, and he said to his brother, listen, be quiet, they're going to shoot us, just shut up. And it's like this big emotion and screaming. And, and eventually they're just standing there. And the one guy comes and he takes uh, a 9 millimeter uh, whip uh, gun. And he puts it at his back. And he knew this guy's going to pull the trigger. He just knew he's going to pull the trigger. He said, and at that moment, all of a sudden, an angel of God appeared right around him. He said he saw this light that just appeared all around him. And he felt protected in that. And he said this immense peace came over him. He said, and as he was standing there with this guy holding a gun to his back, he just started walking away and he walked towards the door. And when he turned around, the angel disappeared. He said, and those men just started running. He says, you don't know why, you don't know what happened, but they just ran. And they could have easily killed them. They could have easily continued to try to get into the house, etc. And he said, but that peace, all of a sudden, when he knew his life is coming to an end, he said, when this light just came all, and he knew it's an angel of the Lord. So here we can see on a very practical level how God can protect us. And many of you might have stories like that. You know what? Very often we don't share stories like that because we think people will think we're just imagining things. You know, very often something might have happened to you. And when you think back about it, it's like, wait a bit. How did this happen? I was supposed to be injured and I wasn't injured here. Or, you know, the food that we made for the people was not enough, but for some reason it just worked out. There was more than enough food for everyone. Or something happened and circumstances just changed. And when you think back about it, you realize that, God must have intervened in your circumstances. And very often we don't talk about that because we think people will think we're stupid. But you know what? We're supposed to talk about that. Because if more of us begin to speak about that, more of us will be aware of the fact that God is so involved in our lives. So here we can see that angels not only protect us, but they encourage us. They can give you a, a word of encouragement. Okay? Look at this one. In the book of Judges, chapter 6 and verse 12, we have this amazing story of Gideon. And uh, Israel is enslaved, very difficult circumstances. And uh, they need to stand up against a group of very strong soldiers called the Midianites. And uh, so an angel of the Lord came before Gideon, his eyes, and said to him, The Lord is with you, O man of war. Now, Gideon said, who, me? You know, I'm not a man of war. And we know the story that eventually they got 32,000 soldiers. And God said, it's too much. 
And he, it went down to in the 20s, and God said it's too much. And eventually Gideon was left with 300 men to defeat thousands and thousands of enemies. And God used him in that. But when God came to him and he said to him, you are a mighty man of valor, a mighty warrior. Gideon is like, who, me? You know? But those words of the Lord encouraged him to begin to believe that God has got a purpose for him and for his nation. All right, so it's wonderful examples where angels can encourage people. Angels empower and strengthen people. All right, we, we already saw that angels can even make you food. I'm sure some moms will appreciate that some days when you come from work or when you're busy and uh, you would like you know, to have a meal ready. That can last you for 40 days, you know, so then the children don't have to eat for quite some time. But uh, look at Luke 22. Father, if it is your pleasure, take this cup from me. This is Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, just before he's crucified. He said, but uh, not my will be done, but your will be done. And then look what happened. And an angel from heaven came to him to give him strength. Think about that. An angel of the Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane came and gave Jesus strength to go through what he had to go through. Isn't that amazing? Point number eight. Angels war against evil. They war against evil angels and demons. As we are sitting here, there is a war going on between good and evil. Where evil is trying to resist what God is going to do. But don't worry, good wins, all right? We've read the book, the Bible, good wins. So there is this war going on. Look at 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35. It says, And that night an angel of the Lord went out to put to death in the army of the Assyrians 185,000 men. And when the people got up early in the morning, there was nothing to be seen but dead bodies. Think about this. Remember I said last week that angels are not these fat little babies with wings that we see always on cards and, you know, everywhere, these fat little cute babies. They're not angels, okay? Angels are powerful beings. We said last week that angels have got ranks. You've got like generals and captains and, you know, angels with different functions and different classifications and strength and power and different authorities. And here we have the Assyrians wanting to attack the people of God. And look what happened. God commissioned one angel to say, listen, these Assyrians, they don't want to listen. Okay? They keep on, keep on attacking. They want to wipe out my people. Just go and deal with them. And God sends one angel, not a fat baby with wings, Okay, one powerful angel, and in one night, this angel kills 185,000 trained soldiers. One angel. Think about that. Imagine what two angels can do. Imagine what ten angels. Don't you think God can wipe out every single military force on this planet with ten angels? He can. The Chinese military is over a million men, okay? God can wipe them out in one night with ten angels like this. God can wipe out the New Zealand, the American, the Canadians, the European, the whole of NATO in one night like this. That's how powerful angels are. We sometimes forget that. And look at this story where 185,000 people died because of one angel. Look at this. At Daniel chapter 10... In verse 12, we have the story where Daniel is praying to the Lord. And God commissions the angel Gabriel to go and give Daniel a message. But the angel runs into resistance. And there's the prince of Persia, a very strong, powerful, evil force that comes. And he tries to keep back Gabriel to bring the message to Daniel who is in Babylon at this time. Let's read it. It says, Then he said to me, Have no fear, Daniel. This is the angel speaking to Daniel. 
For from the first day when you gave your heart to getting wisdom and making yourself poor in spirit before your God, the words have come to his ears, and I have come because of your words. In other words, look at this. Daniel prayed. God said to the angel, now go to Daniel and give him an answer to his prayer. But what happens? The angel of the kingdom of Persia put himself against me for 21 days. But Michael, one of the chief angels, came to my help. And when I came, um, I came, he was still there with the angel of the king of Persia. Look at this. This powerful angel over Persia. Now, who is Persia today? You know? Iran. Why do you think Iran is so strongly in the news? Here we can see that the angel of Iran over Iran managed to keep the archangel or the angel Gabriel, which is a very high angel in God's ranks, a messenger. He announced the birth of Jesus, of John the Baptist. Here the, the prince angel of Iran, Persia, kept Gabriel back for 21 days. He couldn't get through. There was this fight. And Gabriel's like, I need to take this message. And it's like, no, you don't. And there's this battle. And Michael came, Michael, the angel who's the protector of Israel in Scripture, he comes and he takes over the battle and he hits it and the other angel can get loose and he brings to Daniel the message. And he said, even while I left, Michael was still busy with the, with the prince of Persia. Very strong. That's why Iran is so much in the news at this moment. The principalities and powers over that is very powerful. Okay? Look at that. So we can see that there's a war going on all right, in the heavens. Number nine, angels sing, make music, and worship God. Very interesting. Revelation chapter 7, verse 11 and 12, and says, And all the angels were standing around the throne and about the elders, four living creatures. All right? And they fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Bless, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Here we can see angels are worshiping God. Do you know that when we worship God, angels are joining in? I have heard angels singing on more than one occasion with us. I remember we were in one church service. We were busy worshiping the Lord. And people were just standing there with their, with their hands raised, just worshiping the Lord. And the, the whole congregation were just in deep worship. Okay? Because that's what worship is, our hearts connecting to God. It's not just singing songs. If you think the songs that we're singing is just to singing nice songs to God, it's not the point. The reason we do that is that in and through the songs, your heart can connect to God. If your heart doesn't connect with God in and through the song, we're wasting our time. It's not just singing songs. And I remember while we were worshiping, and people were just connected, and some people were praying in tongues, and some people were just praying in the Spirit and worshiping the Lord. And, as we, and we were singing one song that had the words in hallelujah. And all of a sudden... You heard the angels and people, we were looking at one another as it started. And you heard this, it's almost like a female voice, two octaves above us. Perfect pitch that came in and that sang with us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you could hear, and we were looking at one another and we said, do you hear that? Do you hear that? And angels just came in. Incredible. Absolutely Amazing. Some time ago, I listened to a recording as well where a church was busy worshiping. And you can clearly hear the angels coming in and singing with the congregation. Where people could hear it with their ears. All right? Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it doesn't. But you find it very often when the people of God, when they are involved and engaged in deep worship and their hearts are just to the Lord, they forget about everything. It's all about Jesus. And then... They hear it, okay? Look at this, Luke 2. It says, And suddenly there were with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men in whom he is well pleased. So angels worship. And then the last point. Angels serve those who will inherit salvation. 
Now, this might be shocking to you, but if you are a child of God, if you're inheriting salvation, in other words, heaven is your destiny, you're going to be with God, you are one that is inheriting salvation. And the Bible says that God has given angels to minister to you. Look at this beautiful verse in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. It says, are they not all ministering spirits? It speaks about the angels. Are they not all ministering spirit sent forth to minister for those who shall be heirs of salvation? Or in other words, those who will inherit salvation. Here you can see that God has given angels to assist you in what God has called you to do. And it's very interesting. Uh, it's very obvious there that the author of the book of Hebrews are thinking of two very specific incidents in the Bible. Um, and it says even in Scripture where many of us will entertain angels without knowing it. Okay? It says in the Scripture, many of us will entertain or have entertained angels without even knowing it. In other words, you have mistaken a person for an angel. Now think about the reality of that. Not all people that you think is human is human. That opens a whole new ball game. Think about that. You assume everyone that you see is human. It's not. That changes your world perspective. And the Bible says some of you have even hosted angels. And obviously, the author here is thinking about um, these two stories. Abraham, you can get the scripture there, Hebrews 13, to forget not that, uh, to show love unto strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. We see that Abram did this when God and two angels appeared to them on the way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and then also Lot, when the angels came into his house to come and release him. Okay, they've entertained angels. So angels can appear as people, and sometimes we can mistake angels as people or for people. Okay. So that ends our part one of angels. Very interesting to know that all around us, God has given us beings to assist us, to minister to us, to help us in what God has called us to do. And sometimes when we fall short of our own abilities, God can use an angel to give the rest that we're short of. Okay? So always know that God is with you not only through His Spirit, but also through angels which he created to assist us in what God has called us to do. All right. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you have given us angels. We thank you, God, for the fact that we are not alone and that angels are so powerful, Lord, and yet you have given them the command and the order to be with your people and to help us in what you have called us to do. And so we just give you all the praise and all the glory. I pray that you will open our eyes to begin to see the angels around us. Lord, like the servant of Elisha, his eyes was, were opened to see the multitudes of soldiers and chariots of angels around him, to know that they are more for him and for them than, for, than they are for their enemies or what the enemies are. And we pray that you'll open our eyes to see that heaven is a reality, the kingdom of God is a reality, and God, that you are involved in our lives and that we are not alone. And we thank you, God, for your heavenly hosts that's with us. I pray that we will be able to worship like the pure worship that's in heaven, that we can bring our hearts before you and that we can join with the angels as they declare your glory of holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's close.